Welcome to I Hate It Here, the podcast for HR and people professionals, making the hardest job in the world just a little bit easier. I'm Hibba Youssef. I know some CEOs and some leaders that are like die hard about being in the office five days a week. And I respect that because they weren't the, they weren't the CEOs that were saying, hey, we were a huge fan of, of remote work. So it's like, if you've been talking about being in the office for the last five years, amazing. But if you were just saying, hey, remote work and flexibility, because it's a good marketing tactic, just the same thing with DE and I, right? It's that same idea yep. of like, hey, there was a time where it was fashionably cool to get the media and the attention. Now, what, where is that? And it's not. And then you just look and go, wow, okay, well, a lot of the executive team, there's not really that much diversity. So you can't really have cared that much about it. Internal, no vowels, pronounced internal, is the platform your creative team didn't know they needed until now. It helps you tap into the hidden passions of your employees with super personalized visual profiles. Want to know your junior designer is not just a designer, but also a Bravo Reddit mod, Bad Bunny Stan, and TikTok obsessed animator? Now you can. In seconds, you'll see your people as they see themselves and match them to projects they actually care about. Unlock all the talent sitting under your own roof. Head to seeyourpeople.com to learn more. I am back in your ears with a banger today. This season, we're diving into zones of genius, and I'm chatting with folks about what they're naturally great at in an effort to actually inspire you to find and get into your zone of genius. And when you're fully in the flow, amazing work can happen. So today, I'm chatting with somebody who says their zone of genius is creative work and connecting with people. I knew him from my For You page and killer tweets, and you may know him from the same. Joel is the realist recruiter. No, really. That is his brand. That was actually really corny, but I'm going to go with it. He's like, <laughs> who's so corny? He's the realest recruiter. No, really. Yeah. Um, he's internationally known as a recruiting leader and coach. He's helped thousands of recruiters build their brands online. He has amassed over 700K followers. What's the updated number, Joel? Is it still 700K? Uh, I'd probably say like 900K now. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's okay, a lot. across lot. platforms like LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And his content has been viewed over 2 billion times Yes, I said billion. And Joel, I'm so billion. Yeah. I got that from your website, right? Yeah, billions. Billions. It's crazy. That's nuts. You're so fucking cool. I'm actually really pumped you're here today. And I want to talk about this creative zone of genius Mm. because truly I knew you from your videos. And I was like, this guy is so fucking cool. Yeah, I love that. Well, look, it's great to be here. Have a huge fan. Although when we first met, um, And this is so embarrassing. We're at a conference no. and anyone who goes to conferences, you know how it can be. It's like going from like web two to real life. It's just a whole thing. And then um, I think I when I go to conferences, I hadn't really anticipated this, but I grew following um, like pr- like almost like prior to going out into the real world. And then when you go into industry conferences, you're like, oh, wow, people actually know you. And there was just this moment where like, I think like five or six people came up to me and then you came up to me and then I, but I like, almost like blanked everybody. Cause I was just like, I didn't know it was like, I didn't know what was going on. And then I DM'd you like afterward and I'm like, wait, did we meet? And you were did like, it? yeah. I'm like, oh my God, this is, a, this is a failure. And, uh, and, and I'm like really working on this. I just, I blame social media and, and like just digital and, and stuff, but it's great to be here anyway. I've had you on my podcast and it was a great episode. So uh, looking forward to just chatting and giving some value here as well. Can't wait. Okay. So before we get into the good stuff, also after I do the same thing at industry conferences, people will walk up to me and be like, oh my God, I love you. I love your content. It feels like you're my friend. And I'm every time I need to like take a course in this. I'm so awkward. So if you meet me in person, (laughs) I'm so sorry. Like I was an Uh, awkward kid growing up and everybody thinks I'm like socially adjusted and then I'll just be out in the wild doing crazy shit and I'm not socially adjusted at all. So when people meet me too, when you were like, oh, hey, and then you like, I kind of like walked away. I was like, he's probably going through it. Like I'm probably the 18th person who came up to him today. And I was like, we'll talk another time. Literally felt no way towards you. I was like, he, it's the end of the day at an industry conference where I'm sure 80 people have talked to him. I'll chill. But it yeah. was great to even then we talked after that and that was even better. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm so weird in person, Joel. I like it's 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 one of those things too where like um it's it also like with names like I can really struggle with like names and then it's like yeah. I think with online it's like 
you have DM relationships and you have like commenting relationship. There's like a million platforms. And then also like, I mean, this isn't the case with you because you actually put out content. So, um, but we also too, I think we had just connected online. Yeah, we had just, I well. followed you forever. And I, I was honestly like, he doesn't probably know who I am and he doesn't care about me. Like he's too cool. I'd been following yeah. you on like Twitter for so long for TikTok. So I was crazy. like, wow. I know. And then when you were like, let's meet, I was like, me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's so but it was cool. a good time. It's actually yeah, it so one time at that same conference, I was having a very serious conversation. Someone came up to me and was like bearing their soul to me. And then my friends, my friends popped in and they're like, hey. And they're like tapping me and trying to interrupt the conversation. And I had to turn to my friends and be like, hey, can you guys go away real quick? <laughs> and they were like, what? And I was like, this woman is literally bearing her soul to me and is talking about like how emotional this job is and how she finally feels wow. seen by like my content. I was like, I can't talk to you all. So like I do the weirdest thing at conferences. And honestly, I should just like sit in a corner and not talk to any human being so i I'm glad I just, that we well, I was i just got back from um Wreckfest usa right. which yeah. is like all recruiters they... and i think um it was kind of it was kind of similar to that and i it's, it's just something with which i like i'm i'm kind of learning and it's something i didn't really anticipate and it's yeah. good it's good but it's, it's also bad. um i really value like relationship and having one-on-one conversations and Same. I think a lot of times at conferences, it is it can be hard to even have that and like to have something like that's like actually meaningful. Um, so I don't know. I haven't figured that out, but I have figured out like I need to be maybe more intentional. And then also like, you know, it's like I have a couple drinks and then that also like doesn't always help either that. because then I kind of forget like. Yeah. Like how one guy came up to me and it was like we had done something, I don't know, like a year ago. And he was just like. Joel, remember me? And I'm, and it's like I don't want to no. be like no, I, I don't want to like look at the name tag and, um, but I think he was kind of offended by it. And and at the end of the day, I'm always like, and I always have this approach online too. It's like people aren't getting back to you or whatever. Like, just it's fine. It's okay. Like you can't like, take everything personally with it, you know. And uh, anyway, definitely not. Okay, well, we'll get to some more of that in a minute. But first. This season, I've been I'm writing in the newsletter all about how people need to like rethink certain yeah. aspects of HR. So I've been trying to ask every podcast guest, what's one thing you think HR folks should rethink? Yeah. I need to write this sentence better, honestly. But like, what's the yeah. thing that you're like, no, we got to reimagine this. We got to do it differently. Yeah. I mean, we were talking about this or like prior to the show. Mm -hmm. When I got into recruitment, which was a decade ago now, so I haven't been in you know for a hundred years, but a decade is enough to know like what's going on, right? And I've, I've, yeah. I worked on the agency side, so I've had the advantage of working with lots of different companies. I I think we're hitting a point where we need to think about like culture, but not like not necessarily what culture is, but how we communicate what culture is particularly to candidates obviously i'm coming from like a really recruitment focused and like employer branding standpoint yeah but i i think how we communicate what what our culture is um really matters and it's not just communicating on the front end what the culture is but then lining things up with the action so i'll give an example like and the easiest one right now which i think most of us have moved past past hopefully is we'll treat you like family like if that's what you're communicating but then your actions are we're going to lay you off the minute that it makes sense to lay you off that that's not a good thing and what actually happens is you just erode trust another example of this that i'm seeing is re the conversation around remote work now i'm i'm totally fine with whether your belief is in office is better or hybrid or work from home whatever your stance is that's great but i think as like hr and people who are the voice of what stance your company has it's just be it's being honest and transparent with people so a great example is a lot of companies said i remember this because i was reading the articles and i was creating a lot of content around this there were companies that would come out and say yeah we're going to be remote work we're going to have remote work forever that's how it's going to be we're going to pioneer this this is the future and then two to three years later they're now forcing people back to the office and and the problem with that is is it just erodes trust. So I think there's these conversations around culture, who you are, we need to get more authentic and just be real and honest. And I think there's a, there's going to be a transition where Gen Z, Gen A, these generations, they're coming in for, in with a lot more information. They've seen a lot more. There's a lot more voices on social media that aren't 
that you don't have control over. Yeah. And so I think really understanding like how can we cre- create and communicate things authentically in a real way that are actually in line with what we're doing and our actions is going to be crucial. Because I think if we don't do that, you would just you're just going to lose trust and there's going to be a huge divide. And I actually think it's going to be really hard for a particularly large company. I actually think it's going to be really hard to like even just attract people to come and want to work for you. So, yeah. you know, it's influencing and it's getting leadership on board with that as well, which I think is, is part of the challenge. Uh, but it's just rethinking like what's this EVP that we're putting out there and is it actually real? Uh, because that's what people are craving nowadays. They're just craving authenticity, real, um, for better or for worse, right? Let them make that decision. It's kind of wild when I see companies that like don't practice what they preach. And like we've all been there. I think a lot of companies get scared to just say the real thing. Like say you're going back to the office because you have a 13-year lease that you can't get out of. Exactly. I, w- I think like the employees would much rather hear that than we think we'll connect better in the office. Like, no, n- no, that's not. I-, I feel like all the messaging around it, even Amazon has been really interesting because they just said come back to the office five days a week and that caused a bunch of outcry and now the employees are very upset. And I just keep thinking like the messaging around it was like, we want to connect, we want to be more innovative, blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, your stock price is much higher than it was when the pandemic started. And like, you're doing just fine. And like saying that innovation is suffering because people are working remotely is kind of like a lie. Yeah. I I, I, I mean, I, I think right? so. Especially, I think what's tough is a lot of the same companies, like if you had to go back and you can just Google it. Yeah, you, a lot of executives and leaders were actually saying the opposite, and they were saying, "Oh, yep. it's way more better for employees. Like, <laughs> helps with like work life balance, and they're able to focus on their health, and they're able to like maintain priorities." So that that content's still out there. Like, I was, and I think it, I think as a company, I'm not even gonna name the name, but they, um, you can go on my TikTok to find this. But I googled like what their stance was on remote work, and one of their leaders was like, "Yeah, we're gonna be innovators and pioneers in it, and like we really believe it. It's better." and I don't actually know what the data is because I think, again, this is another thing where it's like there's a study show. The studies will show whatever you wanted to show with whatever Agreed. you're searching for. So if you want to search for, um, you know, uh, in-office work in- increases employee engagement, there's probably a study that shows that because it's like it seems like these studies are just created to show whatever someone's trying to point out. Yep. But I, I don't know. For most people I talk to and every time I do a poll, for example, on LinkedIn or Instagram or any of the platforms where I'm following – I will say that it's usually usually 50-50 almost split between like remote work and hybrid. Um, but the, the common thread all the time is less than 5% on every poll I've done, which I have thousands of respondents, less than 5% of people say that their preferred option is five days a week in the office. So, um, but I, resp- I, know, I know some CEOs and some leaders that are like diehard about being in the office five days a week. And I respect that. Because they weren't the, they weren't the CEOs that were saying, "Hey, we were a huge fan of, of remote work." Agreed. So it's like if you've been talking about being in the office for the last five years, amazing. But if you were just saying, "Hey, remote work and flexibility," because it's a good marketing tactic, just the same thing with DE and I, right? It's that same idea yep. of like, "Hey, there was a time where it was fashionably cool to get the media and the attention." Now, what, where is that? And it's not. And then you just look and go, wow, okay, well, a lot of the executive team, there's not really that much diversity. So you can't really have cared that much about it. Um, right. And so that's what I'm saying is like cut the like whatever the trend is, like jumping on the trend because it's marketing, just be real. And it's like yeah. if you don't actually stand for the things you're talking about, that's okay. Just be honest about it. And yeah, sure, you're going to lose some people. And you maybe lose something, but that's okay because what's worse is being a liar and people finding that out. That's how you really lose oh, in, the, in the end. You know? Yeah, that's how like you really turn the employees against you, honestly. I'm like, just tell them the, the truth as much as you can is honestly my best policy. My yeah. CEO and I, like, we don't argue about this as much anymore, but we do really, we had to find a middle ground between like transparency because I was always like so much transparency and he was like, transparency but position it in a different way and so we've like worked to find this groove where we can share things and in a way that feels good for both of us so it's positioned correctly and it's transparent enough where i feel like the employee is is understanding why we're doing something versus not understanding or thinking that we're doing something shady because there's just i I think that's a that's a huge point right it's like people want to know and this is, this is why I always struggled in corporate was like i wasn't very good at being told what to do without knowing why 
but there's definitely like a generational shift i think where like a lot of um a lot you know a lot of more seasoned people like they grew up in a time where it was like you just do what you're told and you don't really ask why like the culture was definitely not an ask why and i think because of like again information and like there's so much access to information and um a lot more people now ask well why and so when you're talking about the office, like, oh, you want to come back to the office? Okay, collaboration, but why? Like, oh, how? And it's like, if you're like, well, and I was in, I literally was had a dinner with HR executives and this was the whole focus. And there was an expert really? in workplace um, kind of this Ooh. whole conversation. And he said, you have to create like a purpose for it. So if you think you're just going to force people back in to like uh, like la- laptops and Zoom meetings, like you're going to it's not going to work out well. Yeah. If you're creating like a purpose and environment and activities that people can do and it, it makes sense and they go, "Yeah, I see the value in this." It's great. He's like, "But I don't think that's actually what uh, what is going on." So um, I don't want to necessarily dominate the whole conversation around remote. Yeah. Work, oh yeah. Let's get at it. Let's get at it. It's, topi- get it's topics it. like that. All right. That's yeah. what I think. Like just with the EVP, try and be as authentic. I love what you said. Like be as transparent as you can. Um, yeah. But that's what integrity is, right? It's being honest, not necessarily telling everybody everything about yourself, but being honest about the things and just being, you know, being real. Right. There are things I want no one to know about myself. Honestly, that's called my <laughs> private life. I mean, it's like it, we're we're content creators, though. So like, people want to feel like they know us. Okay, on the note of that, that's going to be my segue into your zone of genius. So when I was texting you, like Joel, be on the podcast, please, um, and then I was telling you about zone of genius, I was like, what is it? And yours was like creative work and connecting people. Yeah. So I want to talk about that creativity because your content is so good. It's so natural. I feel like you're my friend, and then it's like interesting. It's fresh. It's real. So how did you first discover that like your zone of genius was that creative stuff? Yeah, it's it's funny. Like when I was a little kid, I used to do um, like I wrote Plays. like a play when I was like a little kid, and I I was like Shut in the up. theater and like yeah, I like I thought it was really cool. Like I would write this stuff, Don't. and like I think like definitely like in like high school and middle school, like I was like a rebel without a doubt. Uh, be- <laughs> and I, I was like you know I moved I moved actually from England to the U.S. Yeah. when I was twelve and. I think whenever you make a big move like that, um, you know, it's like you're trying to fit in and you're, you're different. So I was like, I was different. And and at, th- at that time, I was, and I still am huge into soccer. And it was like at that yep. time when I moved over here, soccer was not like a popular sport like it is now. It was just like, it wasn't a thing. And so um, I kind of got away from that, I think, because I was trying to be cool. And mm-hmm. I definitely didn't think like the kids in theater were like the cool kids, you know? So I was like, trying to get away from that. But I think when I got into corporate, um, I started to see, I started to see like, I would always have like ideas of how we can make things better. That was kind of like okay. the, the first thing of like, um, oh, this process could be better. Like maybe we should think about this. So for example, I worked at uh, a big bank and I remember yeah. actually pitching in their idea box because I thought people cared about that. Uh, video banking as like a great solution and they like cool. it went up the the ranks and then it got shut down yeah. like this is not a good idea and it's like now that's a normal thing um, mm-hmm. and then most recently when it came to content i just started writing on linkedin and as as weird as it sounds i was just i saw all these messages on linkedin talking about if you could build content if you could build a brand people will come to you i was in more of a sales position so i was like yeah wow what how amazing would sales be if like it would come to you and especially recruiting sales, like recruiting dream. sales sucks. <laughs> um, so imagine if people could come to you cause they want to work with you. And I was like, wow, that's, that can be done. So I just started writing and writing led into a lot more writing. And for a while I was like obsessed with writing, obsessed with like copywriting and, and how to get people's attention and, and, you know, long form. Like I just loved writing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then, I started and I'd always kind of delved it with video a bit, but video was always my uncomfortable kind of place. But eventually over time, I just got into video. And I think um, the more I got did it, the better I got. And then luckily, there's some like really great people right now who are like pioneering video. And like the two people that come to my mind are like, uh, that I really look up to or like corporate Natalie and corporate bro, like the, you know, Ross yeah. and Natalie, like the stuff they do, um, I think is awesome. And they've been doing it longer. 
um, as well. And but I think seeing that type of content emerge that opened the door for some of like my humorous content. Mm-hmm. And then the other side was just like, you know, I'm definitely not one of those people that is really afraid to speak like what's on my mind and just talk about things. And that's been a huge edge when it comes to the rest of my content, which is really around, you know, corporate, the news, my point of view on things. I've not been afraid to share my point of view. So I think that's what like, that's kind of like where everything came from. And again, it's like you get better as time goes by. And so I've been doing this for five years. If you look at my content from like four years ago and five years ago, it definitely wasn't at the level it is now. And it's it's evolved. And I think the key with all of it is it's consistency. And I've I've realized this is the same with everything. It's being consistent is the key to getting good at something, but it's not just consistency. It's like the consistency and the consistency of trying to get better and caring about like what you're producing. So if you're, if you're creating the same content you were five years ago and you're wondering why the algorithm hates you, it's because your content has just not gotten better and you have to kind of keep adapting evolving, trying new things. And I've just realized that and I've, I've been really dedicated to it. So I love that. We call it reps at the gym at work week where like the more reps you do, like the better you're going to get at exactly. it. I remember when I when I wrote my first newsletter, I was like, oh, my God, it took me so long. My first newsletter probably took me like 10 hours. I like agonized over writing this newsletter about pay transparency and you can go back and read it. And now I look at newsletters that I write today and like a good newsletter, when I have my point of view down, I can crank it on like an hour or two. That's amazing. I have the data ready, it's done. And it's like been such a journey over two years. So you're right. Like I can't really wait to see where my content goes in like three more years or four more years, whatever, however long. So I think it's cool that you love that. I also was one of those kids that would write plays and short stories and do weird things and told my parents I wanted to be a writer and they were like, please, we You're did like, no, not immigrate no. to this country for this. <laughs> exact or we did not immigrate to this country to support you for the rest of your life. And yeah, I was like, like, you can be a doctor or a doctor, scientist. a lawyer, yeah, engineer. That's about it. But it was, yeah, it was yeah, really yeah. funny because I was just like that. That was what I did as a kid. Like I gravitated toward that stuff. And it's been really interesting because like you have built this massive brand in the recruiting space. Like, yes, corporate Natalie is out there. But when I think of recruiting, I do think of you. And so yeah. when you were starting to think about building that brand, how did you how did you approach that? Like you were bare, five years ago, what were you doing to start building this personal brand of yours? I think five years ago, I didn't have any goal. I, there was no goal. It was just like, Love that. oh, no I want to just create content. Okay, enjoy yeah. it. And I guess I had it in the cloud in the sky, like vision of, oh man, maybe people can know me and then I can get business. Like that is kind of cool. where, where it started with. Always, then it yeah. went to a phase of like, hey, I really enjoy this. Um, and then it was like two to three years ago. That's when like tick- I started building on TikTok and then that yeah. started happening. And so it's kind of evolved. And I think the a big point for me was, and as cliche as it sounds, like this sign right here. So for anyone who's listening, I have a big sign uh, that my wife actually designed. Uh, and the she got it from that- Etsy and it's a, uh, what do they call this kind of light? a neon light that says the yeah. realist recruiter. And I think that was actually the point where I was like, that's the brand. Like the brand is real. And it, the cool thing is, is it kind of lined up with, like, I just had randomly picked that, not randomly, but I thought, what would it, you know, what kind of recruiter do I want to be online? Well, I want to be the realist. So I want to like give job seekers, like what's actually going on. I want to talk about real things. Um, and now, you know, I've got a recruitment agency business and that's the motto. It's just like no BS recruiting. Like we're going to tell you what's up. We're going to tell you what is actually going on instead of what you want to hear. Um, that's, that's it. And it's so in line with it's, it's in line with who I am as a person. And it's not like I'm perfect. It's not like I don't ever mess up, but you know, it's like, I'm just, I'm just me. Right. It's like, you see what you could get, what you see. Like if you're at a conference, I'm probably not going to be there in like a three piece suit, like telling you like, you Same. know, about my 5am r- routine and trying to get you to do a run. Uh, but I'll have a conversation with you and want to connect and be authentic. So that's cool. <laughs> yeah. I would also not be doing a 5 a.m. PM run, AM run or PM run. Honestly, be, let's be serious. I'm well, that, there's a guy I know who I, I like. I, I, I actually am really a fan of this guy's content, and it's like yeah. the complete opposite of my content. And cool. he doesn't he doesn't have anywhere near as many followers. But I tell you what, he does. He's got committed followers because he's just being him, and he's like super intense. 
Um, and he's, you know, he runs a business, really, really successful guy. Um, but he goes to conferences and he organizes like a 4 a.m. run, you know, and I'm like, that's never going to be me, but it's him. Yep. And that's what I like about his content. I respect it because it's him and he's never going to go viral with like Gen Z going, yeah, that's cool. But <laughs> it's like he's authentic. And so I, yeah. I really respect that, you know. For 12 years, the world's most innovative brands have trusted Working Not Working to find top-tier creative talent. Now they're helping you keep that talent with internal. No vowels, pronounced internal. Internal is your go-to platform for unlocking the hidden passions of your team. With super personalized profiles, you can dig into your people's ambitions, interests, and secret skills in seconds. Who knew your project manager was a national champion pickleball player, D&D dungeon master, and a karaoke queen? Visit seeyourpeople.com and start matching your team's passion to the work that lights them up. There's something for each person. Like I, like hearing you tell that story, you're you built your personal brand around around you, which is like the most important piece of this. Like when people, I feel like try to make it super scientific and are like, I want to be the blah 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 on this thing, and then try to position themselves as that. I just feel like I, you can see through that content. Like back to your authenticity point at the very beginning, people know when you're not being authentic. And yeah. so I love that you thought about your brand as like, what's the most even what's the most natural thing to you? Even when we were building I Hated Here, we like had a lot of conversations about what should we call the brand and like, what do I want it to be? And I literally woke up and I was like, we are calling it I Hated Here. Mm. And my CEO tells the story where he was like, nobody will want to sponsor anything. Like, what is a great brand that has hate in the title? Mm. And I said, if you just trust me on this, like, it's not that I'm a hater and I wake up every day like with negative thoughts, but it's that I really believe that haters are going to change the world. I mean, and my favorite example is like Kendrick Lamar. It started with the diss track and now the man is at the Super Bowl on his petty hate towards Drake. And I have never loved anything more. I'm like yeah. a big rap person. So I don't know. It's just it's making it about you. And I, I really love that you wanted to be authentic about the job search because I felt like a lot of content five years ago about recruiting was very much like, here's how you game the ATS. Here's how you stand out in an interview. Here's how blah, blah, blah. And it was like trying to treat treat people or teach people who were looking for jobs, like how to game the system. And I yeah. feel like your content is like, no, here's the actual system that's happening. Here's yeah. what you really need to know. So I love it. Yeah. Well, and it's, I think it's funny now that I'm like going out and meeting people, Yeah. Um, which is a whole experience. The biggest compliment I get from people is like, oh, I feel like I know you. And then when yeah. they actually do get to know me, they're like, oh yeah, it's you and the content. And I think that like, I get where there's a fear of like putting yourself out there. And I, I understand all of that. I've never really went through that because I, I didn't, I guess I just didn't really think about it again. I wasn't like, oh, I want to build a personal brand because yeah. that's what you have to do. I was just more like, yeah, I'm just going to write stuff and, and enjoy it and get, and you know, and, and it's like, I've gotten better over time and yeah. um, you hone your skill and go, okay, what are people responding to? What aren't they responding to? But I think like the more that you can, and obviously like when you're creating content or you're doing a podcast, you're doing whatever kind of content you're doing, um, you can't a hundred percent be yourself because th that's, you know, it's impossible to be 100% of who you are and it's like yeah. who we are changes. But I think it's just being, again, it's just being like, you know, real. So then when people meet you and, and I, I, I learned this lesson earlier on, I met somebody on LinkedIn that I really respected Mm. And that whole thing was like, oh, I just love people. You know, it's just kind of like cheesy. But I was like, oh, I thought they were really into people. And then I met them and it was like, they just weren't even engaged in the conversation. And then oh. it was just like, I was like, this is just, you're just fake, man. Like, this, is, like you built this thing, but it's not even who you are. And I was like, I would hate that. And again, like, sometimes like, you know, it's conferences, like you get tired. So it's like, you can't just be 100%, 100%. But you know, it's again, it's like you can have those conversations with people. And I think it's like the actually connecting with people. And, and, and that's why I've always big, been big on like online being away and then just trying to connect with people in a real way. And I've made mistakes. Like I've, I went through a period of time where I was like a troll kind of, and I was like kind of troll people <laughs> sarcastically. Oh, uh, cause I thought yeah. it was like, I was like, yeah, I'm the realist recruiter. You know, I can be kind of yeah. snarky, I but I had a couple things that happened where I was like, man, like, 
the world's kind of crazy and like people re- read things the wrong way and people mm-hmm. take things the wrong way. And mm-hmm. it was recently at a conference where I met someone who blocked me and that was just kind of weird. And like, I'm sure there's people I've blocked at times. Um, but I think now I'm at a spot where it's like, I just want to stay in my lane. I'm not down to like, if someone's cheating the system, the gaming system, whatever, stay in my lane, talk about things I care about. And realize like you said like it's a long game this whole thing is a long game and i want to be around i want to be in hr i want to be in recruitment um and and there's patience that's involved with that as well so i've just kind of learned all these lessons as time's gone by yeah i also have met i think i've met a friend of somebody who did does not like me online and it was like a very uncomfortable meeting because i (laughs) i know who they were i was like i know who you are i i have like this is this is it for me i'm not trolling people on the internet but yeah. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say what I think, and sure. that gets that rubs a lot of people the wrong way, Joel. Like it is honestly wild. I'm like I'm not coming for you personally. None of my content ever comes for a person based on things I don't know. I don't know about them. It's like if I don't like re- if I don't like Return to Office, I'm gonna say I don't like Return to Office. I'm not saying I don't like you or your mom. Like can you just let me live and have an opinion? But I feel like in the age of the internet, and I don't know if you've experienced this because like. You're a dude. I'm a woman. I feel like I get a lot of shit for being a woman with an opinion. And I'm like, what is so wrong about me having a thought that it just is like a personal affront to every single person? I, I think that there people forget that like there's always a per, like an actual person behind yeah. behind behind like the thing. And I think people can have a weird idea with like just the internet in general where it's like because you know, it's like I haven't necessarily experienced it from a point of view of, of a woman, but it's like, no matter who you are, like you can always have people who are like, want to be right too. So you have this dynamic of everybody wants to be right. Everybody thinks they're right. There's not like this whole idea of like changing people's minds. Like, I I don't know if I, I think everybody thinks they're right about everything and everybody thinks they know the right thing. And then on the internet that kind of manifests in like people wanting to like explain stuff to you and like, you know, yeah. I've had it where like I'll do a meme around like counter offers and it's like, look, I was a trained recruiter. I know how to handle a counter offer. Okay. I know how to pre close somebody. I know how to do all of the things. Okay. Yeah. I'm doing this as a joke. Like it's a joke. It didn't happen to me. It's a joke. And then I'll get DMs from people and they're like, Name. if you need help, like I've got a training course that can help you on this. I, I and I'm like, I remember w- one time like I posted something about, um, yeah, it was, it was, I can't remember what it was about. It's about maybe like being a dad or something. I was like, yeah. so, someone wanted to jump in and like, like kind of explain it to me. And so I've had a little taste of that, but the thing is I can only imagine what it's like um, putting yourself out there as, as a woman, because it's like, you're going to have like guys who like want to explain stuff to you and like coach you on Always. it. Like, hey, I'm not really asking for coaching. Um, so I've, I've, I definitely have kind of like experienced a lot of stuff and one particular instant I made a comment on someone's post and they just went off and like, I'd start emailing me in the morning and started like emailing my wife and like crazy stuff. And, um, funny enough, I'd actually worked with this person before they were a client of mine, like three years ago. um, My wife's pregnant and it was like this whole freak out. And I think that was the point that I was like, for me, it's just not personally worth it. And yeah. I, I, again, that's why I, now I'm just kind of like stick into my lane. And I've also noticed that like interactions offline are very different to online. So totally. it's like when I meet people offline, it's, you know, I, I'm a likable person. Like I don't really have a lot of, well, I wouldn't necessarily I say that like You're in the asshole. long term, I'm likable. A lot of, I actually rub people wrong way a lot of times when I meet them, first of all, or I used to because I'd be like direct. But now it's like, Really? Yeah, I don't know what it is. I think well, I just like I'm just direct, so I'm not. I'm just like Same. I think uh, people that's can probably why I like you. Honestly, I'm like, yep. I see yeah, and it. sometimes people think that's like cockiness or whatever it is, but it's not. Yeah, it's just I'm know. just di- I'm just kind of direct. But when I meet people, I just feel like there's a different dynamic, and it's like then they're like, oh, Joel like genuinely wants to connect, and it's like even if I forget your name or even if like I don't know who you are, you know, because as hundreds of thousands of people out there and everyone's LinkedIn profile looks different, but it's, it's like, I still genuinely want to like connect and hear what's up with you, you know, and like try to connect. And like, 
also like when it comes to sales like i'm not really like a salesy guy so okay. it's like someone in my own business like i have to deal with like because i really like connecting with people so i have end up having lots of conversations but it's like trying to get business can feel weird so um but that's the that's the thing people say they're like oh, i really enjoy connecting with you so i always keep that in mind i'm like even if someone's yeah. mean you online it's like are they really going to be meaning you like face to face if you ever meet? Probably not. Some probably people not. would be, but I mean, so, yeah, some people definitely not. would be. I also think it just says more about the person than me. I'm like, you exactly. know, the, the the Michelle Obama saying, "When they go low, we go high." I always joke with my friend, like, "No, we go lower," but like in reality, I don't, I don't do that. I'm just like, if you're mad about something I posted, like that's a you problem, not a me problem. Like I stand very firm in my beliefs and like. I don't expect everyone to like me, Joel. Like the the point about creating content is not so that everyone in the world likes me. I recognize that only certain people who align with the things that I believe in potentially might like me. Yeah. And so I think that's the other thing people get really personal about. Like when someone says something nasty on my LinkedIn post, I'm just like, okay, like this is, you could, you don't have to follow me. Nobody is forcing you to follow me. No one is forcing you to be my real life friend, but like you don't have to be nasty to me. Just like remove yourself from this situation. But the internet's a wild place and that's an episode for another day where I don't even know how people deal with it. Back to creativity because I'm really curious. You're yeah. you're producing so much content. I see you on every platform. I can't escape Joel. Just kidding. I'm actually very happy about it because your content's so great. How do you actually stay creatively inspired though? You're doing so many different forms of content. Yeah. How do you do that? I, look, I think there's there's a blend and I lean on certain things. So one of the things that I lean on heavily is the news. Mm. And it's like the most underrated yeah. content creation ever. Like just talking about the news, talking about what's going on. So one of the one of the tools I use I love is the green screen. Yeah. Uh, where, you know, I mean, you've done Call those me. videos. But for anyone who doesn't know yeah. those videos, those are the videos where you see it and it's like a person's head and then there's a news story and they're commenting on the news. So I talk a lot about the news. And so that always, you know, the news is always going on. You know, they're creating news. I'm giving my point of view on it. Um, so so that's one way. And then I look at just situations and conversations I'm having. So, for example, I had a conversation with a talent leader yesterday, and I said, what's the biggest struggle you have with your team? And he's like, well, I really struggle with my recruiters being, like, consulted, consultative and, like, strategic yeah. when they're dealing with leaders in the company. I said, like, great. Well, that's some content that I could create stuff about because I actually love being a consultant to clients and like understanding the needs, understanding the business. Um, cool. So I look at like just conversations I'm having. Um, and then there's other content as well. So like one of the things that happened be right before I started creating content, I was reading a lot of books. I was reading like six, seven books, uh, wow. a, a month. So I was just burning through these books and then I stopped reading and it was six months later I started creating content. So cre like, looking at other content, being inspired yeah. by movies and, and that. Um, and then I also, you know, I'm also a big fan of saying the same things over and over because when I look at the creators that I'm the biggest fan of or creators that I really looked up to, like when I first yeah. started creating content, um, a lot of them just say the same stuff over and over in different ways. And that's huh. because, you know, and I think about this, like car commercials, right? Like how many times have you <laughs> seen the same car commercial? Yeah. It's like, Number one, people forget. And yeah. then number two, it's like it actually takes a number of times for somebody to hear something before they get it. So, yeah. And I think the pressure is when you're a creator is like you create your video and then it's like you have this fear of like, oh, I don't want to do the same thing over and over. But the problem is, is that original thing you did was probably not 100% original. Like someone's probably said something similar. Yeah. And then number two, it's like, yeah, okay, people might recognize it, but like three or four months go on they probably aren't going to remember that you said the same thing. So I, I'm big into like Re repurposing Repur yep. and like, you know, shifting it a little bit, but um, yeah, that's, that's how my kind of my mind works. And, and, um, and then as far as like the consistency, it's like, again, when you have the four or five things you want to talk about and you have your points of views, it's a lot easier. And then you mix in the news. I comment uh, like one of the best features on social media right now that it's underutilized without a doubt is like on TikTok and Instagram, you can respond to comments. Oh yeah. It's like, I do it hey, all get, the time. Yeah. You get a hundred comments. You're going to get a couple in there, which are good. And you create, you answer, engage with the audience. So, um, that's how I think about it. And, you know, I take that pressure of myself, like if something flops, something doesn't do good. I could care less because guess what? I'm going to produce seven more videos that day. So it'll be fine.
You, that's so much resiliency. Uh, Joel was the one who encouraged me to create content on TikTok. So and you went viral. Just one time. Just one time. We'll get we'll get there someday. Someday maybe we'll be viral every day. I don't know. I'm just like out there trying to say things that I don't. Not that because like nothing's original, Joel. Right? Like we've all said the same things over and over again. I just I'm trying to show up as myself. That's like literally my only goal on TikTok. I'm like, let me be as chaotic as I can possibly be because that's my real life. And you have to, I think with the video, short form video in particular, it's, it just takes a while. Like, I don't know another way to describe it other than it just, it takes a while to find like your groove and your vibe and like your audience as well. And these, these algorithms are really great at actually finding the audience. So Mm -hmm. as long as you're talking about the similar, similar types of things, it will find your audience. It's like a matter of time. The challenge for most people is, is like, they just, when I started really getting serious about TikTok, that was probably like three months before I really got any like video that even got over 10,000 views. And I've got 200,000 followers on LinkedIn. It would have been easy for me to just go, ah, forget about it. I'll just focus on LinkedIn. But, you know, it's like, I was like, I didn't let that stop me. I was like, all right, I'm going to keep on creating. I'm going to keep on creating. And then what happens, you get a couple of videos that take off and suddenly it's like the algorithm's going, yeah, I know who you're trying to reach and I know who's interested in your content. Yeah. And these algorithms are good at that. Um, but it just, it took a little bit of time to find that groove and it wasn't comfortable initially. And now it is. And yeah. I'm like, cool. There you go. How how many videos are you making a day? I'm like fascinated. Uh, on an average day, not just like today, but like on an average yeah. day, are you making like more than one video? Like what is yeah. the vibe? Yeah, it could be three to five videos a day. <laughs> a most eight to 10 videos a day. Um, oh I have God. a Google Drive that has about four thousand videos in there, and that's over in just like last year. Um, which is helpful. That's helpful because then you can go back, right? And are like, you, you watching you game tape of yourself, stuff. Joel? Are you going back and critiquing yourself on no. old videos? Okay, good. no, but I will. I will look at the videos that have done the best, and I yeah. will like either repurpose those or I just look at like why did that do the best? Like what was it? What was the hook? And it's a whole thing, um, which like I do try and try and get better at, but it's also like I don't think you have to do it at anywhere near as like wide scale as I have. I just think like you know, like if you're in HR and you're looking to build a personal brand because maybe you want to do some speaking or some consulting, or you want a little career security, um, the thing that's going to give you the most security and the most like opportunities is a personal brand. Um, and there's lots of ways to build that, like going to conferences, meeting people, doing a great job. All of those things will create your personal brand. Uh, what I found is like, you don't really have to create that much content for people to know you. Um, but I think the more you do, the more likelihood people are going are gonna to know you. So it's like, how far do you want to go down that rabbit hole? And I don't, also don't think everybody needs to create content. It's like, I, I this, if you're like, so if you're really uncomfortable with like video, then don't, do don't maybe start a video like pick the stuff you care about if you're a podcaster then maybe start a podcast but again it's like i i don't think the answer is just everybody create content because of the consistency you know this if you've been doing something for more it's than hard. a year or two like it's hard so you got to enjoy it and if you don't enjoy it it's like me going to the gym it lasts for like two three weeks and i'm like ah not again <laughs> <laughs> Not again. I have to restart this. I feel the same way. That's so funny. Can I tell you, like recently somebody was like, I feel like your personal brand is you're the bad girl of HR. And I was like, <laughs> please don't ever call me that again. Uh, that I was like, don't hilarious. ever refer to me like that the again. Bad girl. <laughs> the What's bad like, girl uh, it's like what Rihanna. Call it? Corporate baddies or whatever. Cor- yeah. Know, like, yeah. A whole... I'm like, <laughs> me the Which bad girl a lot of, of the content around here here's the thing. Like, I will say this to anybody. There is so much opportunity mm-hmm. for people who like actually want to put out like valuable content to help people. Yeah. There's so much opportunity yet because I know all of the meme accounts around work, like all of them. Like I know them all. I've had conversations with most of them. Um, and, you know, I guess like, like uh, again, kind of going back to corporate Natalie and, and corporate bro, like they kind of fall into that. Now they've shifted. If you notice, they've got the demoted podcast, which is more serious and having more conversations. And I think that's adding that's adding to like their voice and it's getting people to know them in a different way, which I think probably because like the easiest content in all fairness to like get viral is humor, like funny stuff. Like I've done it with the memes. 
I think the challenge is, is how do you create funny content and still have pack that punch of like, all right, you're a thought leader. And I had to like tread this really lightly because Same. I can't just come out there and be like, well, I'm a thought leader. You know, it's like so-and-so with who's got 30 years of experience is going to be like, no, you're not, you don't know anything. And yeah. so I was like, all right, I have to like hit this angle of like humor and like winning people over and, I'll grow into like the thought leadership piece, right. As I'm growing in my, as I'm growing in my career. Um, so I think, but I think if you're like, Hey, I got a lot of experience. I want to give good value and I have that really valuable insights. Um, there's a need for that. And there's a need for actual people who have like experience. But what I've noticed is the people who it's crazy, man. It's like imposter syndrome affects people who are actually like have experience. And yeah, when you don't, you don't have imposter syndrome. So you're much more likely just to go out and say stuff. And so you have this weird thing where like you literally have, you know, people who have zero experience in something uh-huh. becoming an expert because they're just creating content around something they don't even know about, which is wild. Yeah. Well, you know, that's not us. We've done this job. I have a lot of white hairs to prove it. The other day, I like parted my hair the other way. My partner was like, <laughs> Oh my God, you have so many white hairs. And I was like, why do you think I've been parting this? Look at that. Time? I got my daughter was beard. always like, she's like, Dad, why is your beard so white? And I'm like, I'm a recruiter. I've been doing this job for too long to create content for too many years. And you can see when I started recruiting, like there's a picture of me on like one of my old websites. Stop. I had like long hair and like b- thick black beard. And like as time has gone by, it's just gotten wider and wider and wider. And I'm like, <laughs> That's just, it's just recruiting and like. That's what it's doing to us. Yeah. Okay. I, mean, I, I don't know if I could do HR all the way. I have to be honest. I think <laughs> I would be, I think, I think I would be, yeah, I don't know. I think like the people, like recruiting with, with people is kind of like enough. And again, I'm an agency. I'm not even internal. And sometimes I'm like, man, I don't know whether I could deal with hiring manager that doesn't know how to make up their mind. I just think I would. I think I, I would they, I would probably say the wrong thing and then they'd be like, you're you're out of here. None of the hiring mm. managers like you. My, okay. yeah, I my patience, someone is like, you would make such a great mom someday. You're so patient. And I'm like, really? Because after every work day, I'm like, fuck these people. Like, I'm like, <laughs> really, like I can show up on my computer. I'm like, they did so many things to annoy me today and I'm still going to show up tomorrow and do a good job because I care so deeply about the people. Which I is, that, that is, that's basically, you know, that's that's parenting right there. I think about, Oh. These employees be my kids. Well, I, I you know, I got my kids you, you, yeah. I work from home, wife's at home, We've got three kids under five. Oh um, so yeah, it's, it's just, that's a whole, that's a whole thing. But I would still say, I don't know, there's something about like <clears throat> dealing with like leadership, dealing with people, candidates, people, you know, people, things is complicated, you know, and there's a lot that goes into that. So I think uh, all HR folks, I love you guys. <laughs> I'm yeah. also like, I'm also like, it's a tough job because it's like you got to represent the people, represent the company. It's a lot. It's it's. Uh, I think it's it's a real. I just think anything in people and development, it's a challenge, real challenge. Yeah. Oh, people are. Um, I always joke, people are my least favorite part about this job. They're also my most favorite part about this job. They're complicated. They're dynamic. They piss me off. They make me happy. And then when they do the thing you tell them to do. You're like, wow, why does my heart, why is my heart so happy at them filling out their reviews the first time I tell them to do it? <laughs> oh <laughs> not have God. to remind them, right? It's okay, benefit please. season. Can it's you just benefit. please just, Listen, just do the paperwork, please? I reminded our employees so many times. We saw two people who had mixed the deadline and I was like, listen, I told you all several times to do this. Let's never do this again. And they both were like, we're so sorry. And I was like, it's okay. It's okay, but we live and we learn. We let's not do it again. Like, I so just, I, I, hate you. I know I could I could have a lot of kids if I wanted to someday. Anyways, Joel, this has been first of all a masterclass in thinking about building your personal brand, how you create content. There's so many people who reach out to me all the time who are like, I want to create content. Where do I get started? Listen to this episode. Honestly, this has been such a great hour of my life. Um, okay, final thoughts. If yeah. you if I were to be somebody who wants to wake up tomorrow and start my own personal brand, what's one thing they should do? I honestly think you need to consume and find people people's content that you like and that you're yeah. into. It should really be the first step. So just figure out like what's the type of content you like, what's the type of content you relate to because that's going to be kind of the roadmap of, of how you get started. 
And then the second piece is just be really clear. And this is a mistake I made. Um, be really clear on like the things that you want to talk about. So mm. they call it like content pillars, I think is yeah. the correct term. But just have yeah. like four or five things like over like for me, remote work, uh, work culture, recruitment, job seeking, resume tips. Like, you know, I have those like five or six and the news. Have those things clear because <clears throat> you'll probably wake up one day and be like, I have no idea what I'm gonna talk about. So if you already have that like mapped out, yeah, it will help. And then just take the pressure of yourself, you know, like done is better than perfect. I think they say it with content. Yeah. And uh, it's totally true. The people who are going to judge you the most are going to be, unfortunately, your friends and family. It's okay. okay. It's okay. You just, I always say when you're judging other people, you just got to look at yourself and be like, what are you actually doing? Right. So if, if, if you get people judging you, oh, what, you know, what are you, what are you doing out there? Like, what are you doing out there? Yeah. You know, so uh, just have that have that mindset and just uh, take that pressure of yourself as well. And, um, you know, try and try and find something you enjoy about it, because I think that is a huge key. If you're not finding enjoyment in it, What's then you support? will hate it here. Yeah, then you will hate it here. Thank you. Oh. I did not ask him to do that, but Joel, I love you for it. That was so good. <laughs> I did not pay him to do that, everybody. Okay, for people who are not already obsessed with you in the same way I am, where what's the best platform to find you on? You're on them all, actually. Yeah, yeah. Just I would just go just go to www. Is that to me? www.therealistrecruiter.com. Uh, you'll find my podcast there. You'll find how to work with me. You know, if you're looking for like recruitment, consulting, anything like that. And then I've got all my socials on there as well. So just go check that out. Um, and you know, okay. if you want to want to reach out to me, please send me a connection request with a message that says, you know, heard you on Habits Podcast. That helps me because I get a lot of connection requests, and I'm happy yeah. to connect with you. I've actually deleted a bunch of connections recently, so I've got some openings. Hell yeah. Um, so yeah, just just reach out to me. Just mention like, hey, I heard you on the podcast. That'd be great. Love it, Joel. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. You are the best. No, you are the best. Thank you for having me on. And I can't wait to like actually um, meet in real life and not like just have like a really awkward two minute interaction caused by me. That It's my dream. <laughs> Transform 2025. You heard it here first. Maybe we'll both be there. I think yes, be we will both be there. So Hell looking forward to it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks for tuning in. Keep up with all the latest HR resources by subscribing on Apple, Spotify, Google, or wherever you listen. And if you love I Hate It Here, tell an HR friend. I'll see you next time.